we're out here at Fell Pony Adventures meeting their amazing Fell Ponies and it is such a beautiful place to explore. Hello equestrians! I'm Alyssa. I am on a quest to ride every breed and that means I get to meet some really amazing horses and ponies and people that do really cool things with them. There are hundreds of different horse breeds and each one has their own unique story. So saddle up and join me on a ride to discover the horse. The fell pony breed originated in Northern England. I'm here to meet up with Tom and his daughter Flo. Fell ponies have been a part of their family for generations. This herd of ponies my dad's established in 1957. Um, when everybody was getting out of horses and into tractors, uh, he saw a little article in Horse and Hound magazine saying that there were no wild ponies left in England. Um, and through, through that he got in touch with Peggy Crossland, who was a secretary of the Fell Pony Society there, and he said, oh no, that's not true. You must you know, come and see these ponies. And anyway, he ended up buying a couple of mares and a stallion in the 1950s. Now in the really hard winter of 1947, the Heltondale herd, which was the most prolific herd through post-war period, um, a group of ponies got trapped up in the high fells in a valley. Um, really heavy snow, ice, the ponies couldn't get the way out because it was too steep and it was weeks before anybody could get to the ponies and by the time they did they were all dead except for one yearling colt and Sarge said well if that colt has survived this winter that's my stallion. So all our herd have come from this this stallion Heltondale Roma that survived that really extreme winter so they're a really hardy bunch. So I took over the herd in mid 90s, 1995 um, and actually I've been kind of subsidising the herd through my work for the last 25 years. Um, but then about five years ago, thought the time they started to earn their keep. So I set up this business, Fell Pony Adventures. We take people away wild camping up in the mountains of Cumbria. Anything from a day to four days. The ponies carry everything, everybody walks. So it's not riding, everybody walks. But that opened, that's opened it up to a huge market actually of people who've never touched a horse before. So I'm finding more than half the people I take out have never touched a horse. Probably getting on for half have never been camping before. So basically you turn up in your clothes off the train. Um, I provide everything else, sleeping bags, tents, shelters, food. My kit has all come from Canada. A lightweight cast aluminium frame, fiberglass pads. Uh, and once you get it set on just right, it just sticks like glue. Oh, cool. Um, so we've got um, a felt pad. I recognize this brand. So yeah, oh, do you? Oh, there you <laughs> yeah. go, right, okay. So if what I do is I imagine a line down the centre of the leg and if that pad comes up to that line it's probably going to be in about the right place. Okay. Yep. Um, these are all adjusted for each pony. So we've got uh, what we call a girth, what you call a cinch. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we go through there three or four times and then give that a little tug. And then one at the back here. Everything has a quick release knot, so if you do get yourself in trouble, I have been caught out in boggy ground a couple of times and had to get things off quickly. Then we've got a, a breast pad, breast collar, breast plate. So this means when the pony's going uphill, and we do go at some pretty serious climbs, that stops everything slipping too far back. And then we've got a, a, a crupper, same as you'd have in a driving harness. Yep. So this just stops everything slipping forwards when we're going, when we're going down, downhill. And some of these bridleways up in the fells, they're pretty serious, you know. There's only a, there's one or two where I've had to take everything off, get the pony up and carry the bags up. Oh Most of the time, they, they deal with it, they know the way to go. As I said, they're extremely sure-footed. Um, even on the day treks, I've got a couple of places where we just send the ponies on ahead and they'll work their way up and they'll just wait for me at the top. So I've got boxes and bags and they just literally hook on like that. Uh, and that, that's it. Now, that's so easy. It's so easy. We're kind of reinventing what they were always bred to do, but just putting a modern modern twist on it, really. A fun twist a on fun it. A fun twist. That Absolutely. sounds like a blast. It's, it's a, it is an amazing experience, and every day is a rite of passage. You know, for some people, even if it's just a day trek, 
just that day with the horse, you're developing a real partnership. The first half hour quite often is just working out the boundaries because, you know, give the pony an inch and it will take a mile. Um, but also what I'm finding is once people have spent the night out with the horses around a fire, with the horse tethered literally five metres away from you, the next day everything just falls into place, you know. The ponies know what they're doing, the ponies have worked out the people, the people know what they're doing, and there's none of them messing around and off they go. And that second day is always just amazing, seeing how far people have travelled in 24 hours, from being complete novices to expert, to actually, you know, they can handle a horse, you know. You can get it up that mountain and down the other side. So that's, that's been a real, I, I didn't see that benefit. When I set up, I didn't realise that these little things are actually the really profound things about it. It's, uh, it's not what I expected it to be a lot of the time. Okay, so um, let's, let's put the rope halter on. Look. It's oh, on. Oh, you, know, you didn't even, oh wow. It's on in like two okay, seconds. Okay, that was really slick. So you've got to work out where it starts. So okay. it can come to you in a complete mess. Right. Okay, but essentially you've got the short fixed bit and that goes, goes over the top of the nose. Okay. Yeah? And then you've got a big loop, which you're gonna flick over. And look at how well she's standing. Yeah. She's like, oh yeah, we're doing yeah, the halter yeah, yeah. bit. Okay. okay. Get it, you know. Okay, it's, it's the challenge. Oh like, no. There you go. Oh no. Now you've got to work okay. it out. Okay, I got a pony to catch. Got so a pony to catch. find the fixed bit. Find the fixed bit, which is, it's like the man from Star River. This is the fixed bit. And so I need to do this. Your loop's not big enough. It's not going to get over her ears. You've got to make the loop really big so you can flick it over oh, quickly. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is the fixed bit down here. <laughs> I'm lost now. I don't even know where it is myself anymore. Yeah, okay. But this... <laughs> I broke your halter. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. No, I'm backwards. You're backwards. You've got the knot on the wrong ah. side. Okay. So what you got there is, I think, probably what happens there is that goes to there. That's it. Oh. That's it. Flick it over. Pull tight. Ha ha ha! There you go. I'm going to get one of these and then I'm going to call so, you. And so, I'm going to be like, so Tom, <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm not sure. <laughs> so if you're showing, um, I can only, again, I can only talk about fell ponies, but if you're showing in England, a rope halter is a tra traditional way of showing. Okay. Yeah. Um, in hand showing. Well, cool. I'm ready to go on a trek, so well, I don't know about you, but yeah, you better yeah, grab yeah, some yeah, sleeping bags. Let's do it. <laughs> cool. Okay, well, how about a drive? Take you out for a drive instead. That sounds wonderful. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so they're just really, really, really versatile. My dad used to say you can't put a fell to the wrong job. Fell ponies have been used or bred for centuries as, as pack animals. So they were basically the backbone of all the transport, certainly in this part of the world and most of England until the turnpike roads came in. If you go back to the 1850s, uh, Kendall, which is sort of the nearest market town to us here, um, there was 200 pack ponies leaving Kendall every single day, carrying everything and anything, um, lead, um, charcoal, um, dairy, wool, whatever, whatever needed getting from the towns into the villages was carried. <laughs> We're going to ride out to one of the old pack pony trails. So it's time to meet my quest horse. So this is Geronimo. He's our stallion. He's handsome. He's first choice if you're up for riding the stallion. I'd love to. So he's a nine year old. You should have good fun with him. Awesome. And he, he just goes like a tank. Yeah. You know, he... What do you think? Time for a fun ride? I think so. Boy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you knew I just hit the record button. <laughs> I love how stallions carry themselves too. They're like, I'm so important. <laughs> Fell ponies can be black, brown, bay, and gray. 14 hands is the height limit. The breed is known for their stamina, hardiness, and sure-footedness. Oh, 
Is there logging up here? Yeah. Okay. Right. Check out that tree. Wow. <laughs> Like he literally just took the tree and ripped it out. <laughs> they barely even flinched. They are popular for both riding and driving and are used as all around family ponies. In this area, the term fell means hill or mountain. Today, there are about a dozen herds still living semi-feral out on the fells. They all have owners, so they're no longer wild, but are usually only handled once or twice a year. The queen has been a patron of the Fell Pony Society since 1982 and inspires so many of us by continuing to ride her beloved ponies. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed riding along with me and discovering the fell pony. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button and I will see you all at the next breed. The queen wishes me to write and thank you for your letter and kind message of support. Her majesty was interested to hear about your forthcoming trip to this country and learn that three of the breeds of horse you'll be featuring in your special project are the Cleveland Bay, fell pony and Highland pony. I am to thank you very much once again for your letter and the delightful photograph you enclosed. Yours sincerely, Lady in Waiting, to the Queen.